next opening. Uh, let's go. <laughs> Just to be a two. Five. Okay. All right. So unorthodox. Let's go. All right. Here we go then. Let's uh, dive right into the unorthodox. One of my favorites. Um, this is the tenth game. I think this this opening is the most interesting because it it will throw most people off like right away. Uh, who's the invasion? It's probably not good. He has a stone here, so with this three three invasion, this stone is not very efficient. We'll just do the classic AI reduction. Extend extra time. Very, very, very fast. Um, do I want to? No, I don't really want that set, but I also don't really want him to block. I feel like turning is bigger though. It's Sente. Then I can approach. Would be nice. Yep, so the benefit of the Tengen stone is that you can make a Moyo no matter where you look. So it's an it's a nice thing to have. Your opponent really has to be very flexible in order to be able to reduce the Moyo. So this is definitely an overplay. It's not preferred in a situation like this. I have so many I have so many stones. So I can just cap and this stone will be probably two or three points, and I get a very strong outside. So these moves are definitely not preferred. We'll just do some basic attacks. I'm trying to make the shape bad. So now I extend. I'll just pull back. Um, we'll just make the connection. <clears throat> so this is also a big move. Okay, he escaped, but he still has zero points, and also I've just gained a very big amount by doing whatever to his group here. Um, I actually don't have the ladder here. It's pretty crazy if you think about it. <laughs> but I'll just push. It doesn't matter too much. As long as I don't cut, he has both cutting points, either at, over here in the corner and also on the outside. Which means it, it, there's, it, there's no... Um, it's not urgent for me to pursue these weaknesses right now. Also, whenever I jump back, this group is still in danger. Still very easy to play for me because all his groups are weak. Okay, well, I guess I just have to capture this now. Actually, I'm going to try this way. There's still no... Ur it's still not urgent to capture this yet because when I play this way, I get to cut in the corner later. Unless he connects now, but then he gets Goche and I can come back and attack this group again. So everything is good. Now when I cut this, his corner is very inefficient. Because he has to live like this. Turning is not that good. 
since he helped me block so I can just play knight's move and I can make territory um, I have a lot of options now I think pushing Hane is pretty big because that also threatens the cutting point so you should never jump out with three stones it's terrible shape um, actually I can just cut now it's just terrible shape for white now I'm okay another thing you guys shouldn't do is you should always read ladders I'm not sure why I have that terrible habit that really gets me a lot of the time um, hopefully it doesn't get you guys sometimes like for something like this if I don't have the ladder then it might be very bad in this case even if I don't have the ladder I don't have the ladder this way so the cut is a good exchange anyway but sometimes it it's it's pretty bad if if the ladder doesn't work and you do something that assumes that it does um, yeah things can go very badly but in this case we have a lot of territory and a lot of influence like if I play a nice move here everything here is territory so definitely leading by leading comfortably at this point so and also white doesn't have any potential at all literally none oh maybe he's trying to escape this So it's probably looking at one of my weaknesses. He should exchange a cut here. It's a good timing for that. Um, he didn't, so in the future he will never be able to do it. Because now when he whenever he cuts, I'm gonna connect. So that it won't hurt my corner. So when he cut, if I have to try here, then he would have a lot of center moves in the corner, and which would reduce my territory as well. Um, yeah, this so this is a similar result, leading territory. Right now, the extension move is very big. Okay, I'll just block here. I don't think the center is in danger at all. It should be easy to make it alive. So I'm not really worried about that at the moment. Maybe I... Yeah, I guess it's still... Okay, on second thought... Probably still worth a move though. Okay, but since he um, since he continued here, I'm gonna finish off this variation. Mm, okay, target mode is pretty similar. Yeah, we'll just protect it. I don't want him to really attack this um, because I think that would be pretty annoying. I'm gonna threaten something here first. Then that would help me build a little bit of our space here. Actually, I should extend here. I don't really want him to play a tiger's move. It's, it's pretty comfortable. Sente threatens the cut. This is a very helpful move for me, actually. Very happy to play the tiger's move. Yeah, so at this point, black is leading by a lot, even though it doesn't actually, it might not feel like it, but from the progress, it feels like it, even though it doesn't feel like it from looking at the board. So the, this type of intuition is helpful. Yeah, because it's it's not obvious when you're looking at the board who's leading. You might see like this huge territory for black on the right and not much territory for white on the other hand. So that might help you a bit, but it's definitely not as obvious as just thinking about the progress. And by that I mean just thinking about the moves 
black and white have been playing. Like in the upper right, white is not very efficient because he had to exchange the Hani and connect. And also black was able to ladder the stone. Also he didn't do a ladder breaker, so this is very efficient. The upper left is very efficient for black as well. I pretty much got all sente moves, so he escaped with his group, but he, he gained zero points along the way. So everything about all of that have been very inefficient. So I think he's still trying to surround me, but I have so much eye space here that I build up. Living shouldn't be a problem for this group in the middle. Then I guess I can keep expanding the potential now. Okay. Descending is very big. Or Haunting Connect. It's like Reverse Sente. Okay, it's Reverse Sente 5. I guess it's not super huge. It's pretty big though. Just gonna defend the rest of this territory. I think I can cut now. gonna push in but so I capture the two stones so I gained about 15 points here which is very satisfying um, with one move you gaining 16 points 15 more than 15 points it's it's not always that easy um, I'm not sure why you jumped here it's quite small Maybe he's worried about some cuts, but if he's not, then in terms of territory, it's only a few points. One or t two or three points, maybe. So that's really small. Like a knight's move here is quite big. Although I can't connect. He's just ignoring that move, but he's a connection issue here. And he also has another problem on the bottom. So his groups are in danger, but I don't think he's realizing that. Although he just played a jump here, which is kind of strange. I mean, like lot, like if if we go by my logic, that doesn't really make sense. So I'm not sure what he was thinking there. He's just gonna capture this. Oh. Oh, that's... Now he's under the cut here. So that's going to be a problem. So at this point, I can just connect. And everything is dead anyway. I could have captured. I don't think that would have made a difference. No, so many options at this point. Uh, guess I'll capture. I think I kind of played. I took this unorthodox opening. Uh, very casually, so just making slow advancements, very sure ways of gaining, getting ahead, and eventually the uh, the lead became bigger and bigger. So it's a very nice, uh, casual pace kind of game, just gaining, and this type of game is very sh sure. So it's a it's a good way to win when uh, let's say in a tournament when you're playing a weaker player. Um, if you have better judgment skills and reading skills, it's actually quite a powerful way of winning. Um, it's kind of like how Shinjin So wins a lot of his games recently. So, very, uh, 
think there's a decent example of that. But of course, it's much easier done on a 3DN compared to a top pro, which Shinzo has been doing. Uh, anyway, um, I think we're getting close with the uh, regular Chinese, so I'm very excited for that. So let's go to the regular Chinese opening now. Regular Chinese opening is is a, has a very long history. It's been played so many times by so many great players. Ah, this is an interesting example. So now it's nowadays I've heard that it's good to honey this way. Uh, rather than honey this way, because black can actually Atari and pull back, making it difficult for white to respond locally. So white has to live in the corner now. Which is a good result for black, because black will take focal center. Okay, he didn't um, Atari, so I think I'll be happy to take Gote in this case. <coughs> wow. Now that is definitely a, that, something that I didn't expect. <laughs> He's uh, running this out right away. Surprising move. Okay, what are my options? I'm tempted to somehow capture it, but maybe it's not necessary. I'll just protect my cutting point and then let him escape. Do I need to haunt it? No, I don't think I need to haunt it. I'll just extend this out. He's just helping me build territory anyway, and he's only saving five points. So these moves are not very good for white. This is a, this is a bad result for white. Very aggressive player. <laughs> He's invading again. Yeah, definitely an aggressive player. To play against these players, you just gotta be making sure that you're aware of your own weaknesses. That's pretty much the only thing that they have going on. So, uh, the problem with these type of moves is that it's not even necessarily beneficial, even if they work. Like, I only had about 15 points of territory inside, but he's going to lose Sente. He's going to make my outside very strong, which is going to make be very bad for this group and also the corner. So this series of moves um, is uh, what we had. Uh, so there's a... Interesting proverb that I was being that I've been teaching to my students, and it's called um, watermelon and sesame seed. So it's a very direct proverb. So it's like when you it's like describing <laughs> okay, literally it's describing someone who has a water, watermelon in their bag, and it took and they saw a sesame seed on the ground. So when they picked it up, what do you know? The uh, watermelon fell from their bag, so they lost. The obvious, which would break and would be useless once it hits the floor. And then all they got was a sesame seed, but they lost their watermelon on their back. And a lot of go, a lot of play in Go is very similar to that. So sometimes when you look at something, and you're like, oh, that's so big, but it's very local. And actually, it's quite a small area of the board. So that is a uh, very common, it's a proverb that happens so much and I think, so I think it's very useful to think about. I like these like really, really simple expressions. Uh, they're quite useful for explaining like these really complicated stuff. And go. Um, so what happened was my opponent came back 
and he got some territory, but he lost. Originally only had about 15 points, but I think I have about 25 now. More than 25, I believe. So he's uh, lost a lot. And I think this game is pretty much over at this point. Um, so he has this group, which is hanging here, which will help me expand a lot on the upper right. And the left side is really, really, um, it's so open, so I can just invade any time. Like I can invade here. Peeping Ascente, so after invading here, I can. I can have the ally in the corner. Also, I can just approach there, so it doesn't have that much potential. So if we take it that we have about the same potential, I have 25 points here, he has about 5 points. So I'm winning by at least 25, I'm winning by at least 20 points right now. <laughs> this is another example of something that you shouldn't do, is when white only has a really really weak group, white is starting a fight here, which definitely will not go well. I don't even really want to double honey anymore. Um, maybe I should have. It's actually not so simple to live. Okay, in this case, he can, he can live. Yeah. Because he has an Atari here, and I have to prevent that. And then he needs to go here to live. This is the only move that lives. And I believe all the other ones don't. And I think he just played one that doesn't. So uh, let me just uh, kill that really quick. And this is why you should always do your life and death. <clears throat> and also why you shouldn't make your opponent rock solid really early. Wow, come on. <laughs> At this point, this is uh, I'm just wasting time. Okay, there we go. Pretty pretty solid win here. Too aggressive play, and um, so that's pretty easy to punish if you know what you're doing with shape. Uh, let's uh, take a look in the next opening. Okay, four. And we're doing the mini Chinese. Mini Chinese opening. Um, this opening got started really quick. I didn't have, even have a chance to... Uh, Say anything before my opponent already played the four moves. So he approached my corner, which means I can't uh, actually play my opening anymore. Yep. The uh, mini Chinese opening, the, the key here with that is really the speed. And you're playing in the fast areas. Whenever your opponent reduces one place, you start with another. So that's really the key here. And I think there was a little bit of uh, lack of consensus for the opening. In my opinion, the the move that's the Chinese opening that's facing the other direction after you approach the star point is called the mini Chinese, uh, which is also how most players call it. The... Uh, the smaller one, which is one space closer to, compared to the regular Chinese opening, is called the Michael Chinese. So I think there was a lot of confusion on that. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I, in my opinion, that's how that should be called. Some people call it the small Chinese. Uh, well, I guess that also works.
I'm actually playing out a very interesting variation in the lower right while I talk about the Chi the mini Ch and micro Chinese openings. Um, okay, that Atari, I don't want him to get. So I'm just going to get a double Atari here. Um, I hate it when I get into these situations. Because <laughs> Okay, should should I should I descend or should I capture? Okay, I'll just I'll just capture. I think there's no point in li leaving that liberty, so we'll just capture. I'm not sure who this uh, variation is better for though. Personally, I don't really like the double honey variation so much super early, but uh. After maybe the last, the second last or the last corner, I typically play the double hane. Um, I usually don't like to play early though. It just feels a little, like it feels like it gives the opponent a little too much going on. So, not, not just kind of preference really. It doesn't, in the end it doesn't really matter. <laughs> he just made a very bad shake here. Um, I think the recent games that I've played have been really, really fast. Um, also, I haven't, haven't been really talking too much over these. Um, sometimes when I find something that I think it is interesting or is worth mentioning, I usually talk about it, but sometimes it's, uh, I don't know, it's it's hard to s hard comment, you know, think about something. So, yeah. So trying to get used to it, but I'm not sure why my opponent just did these, because this is obviously really good for white. Um, just playing really aggressive. Because he made those exchanges, his shape over here is very bad. So I'm trying to exploit those problems. <laughs> Interesting. It doesn't feel like the right shape, but there's nothing... I can't enclose it, but uh, it has no eyes. And there could be liberty shortage issues later, but right now it's, it's okay. It looks like he wants both. That's definitely not going to work. Okay, he's not doing something to the other side anymore. <clears throat> so nice benefit from the attack. Completely captured the two stones up top. He can't really run the stone anymore uh, because of course it's just going to... Uh, White has a lot of forcing moves over here. So he can't really save that anymore. So I pretty much count everything on top as white territory now. Of course, I did Tanuki this, so he can claim that right now. But he can't really do it just quite yet, because uh, this group is still kind of hanging there. He needs to deal with that first. Okay. So this is the correct move. He sacrificed the two stones now. And uh, wow. I'm really tempted to save that, but I think it's unnecessary because I already gained what I did from the up top. Which means I can just walk away now with a lot of cash. <laughs> um, I don't really have to care about that quite yet. In the future, when I extend this out, it's going to be a big problem for him. But as of now, it feels okay to just leave it. Uh, I think I'll extend... I'm pretty much connected. He 
Yeah, I feel like now the uh, extension move is going to be Bihanid. Be what is? Why the Bihanid? What? <laughs> He's going to just leave the stone. That's a very strange way to answer to my Kosumi here. Uh, <laughs> What is he doing? So this can get really bad. This this can become very bad for black. <laughs> very soon. Well, now you just let me capture. And the corner is not completely alive. You know he has the block, so it's not completely dead, but it's still a ko when I hane. So he just has so many problems to deal with right now. And this extension is very, very urgent. And he spends another move to live, so now I can extend this out. I got this everything in Sente. I pretty much enclosed everything. And I made it into like six points. This is so good for white. Does he think he can capture me? Oh my gosh, he's going to try. Okay, well. <laughs> Unfortunately, his group will die instead. I do have some problems here actually, if you notice that. Block and attach and then connect. Oh, he resigned already. That was fast. Um, but yeah, at this point though, he's probably shouldn't continue anywhere. I think in this game, he just didn't really make good shape later on. I think the, in the, this result seems pretty similar for both players, but uh, it's the top left is really what uh, where Black made the most mistakes. And let's claim that and see what the next opening is. One, yes, I, I really want more Sauron State games. So even though it's not one of my favorite openings. It's just um, it's falling behind, and I don't really want to get that back. Here we go. Um, triple star. This is kind of the this is one of the openings where you can just play. Some openings are quite specific, like the uh, Ming Chinese. It's, can be hard to get. Actually, everyone has been jumping out recently. Uh, should we do the kick? Let's do the kick, Joseki. Huh. That's a first. I've never seen anyone do that before, actually. Um, I think it's just connect back. I might just let him move in the corner. Uh, it's quite small. Yeah, when you play a move like this, you should actually read a little bit. Uh, yeah, but I think I've yeah, it's just a common mistake that if I if I mention it every time someone does that, it, I'll probably just be saying that every video. That's probably the only thing that I'm gonna say every video. Uh, so I'm I'm not going to mention that too frequently. Um, I think that would be really annoying, actually. <laughs> Wow. Really? Does that count? <laughs> okay, I think we've just broken the record of the fastest win on an account. 23 moves. Uh, I don't know this person. Um, so, yeah. 
this is real. Okay, well, well, we'll just move on then. Um, okay, I was, I was actually looking at my, my uh, video there. Okay, well, okay, nice. We're back on the six god next video. That's awesome. I'm really happy to draw these. So we're back on the six god. Um, I think we have time for one more game on here. And I think that's high eye. Is it high eye? It is high eye. Okay, let's go. I really don't want this account to be go very quickly because I really I, I honestly don't know what to play with the high eye. Uh, so, <laughs> so we'll see. And um, we're already already at fifteen wins. Only three more to go until we rank up to five. Um, we just had that shape again. Very interesting. So I'm going to cut first and then push through, just like what we did last time. It's interesting how this shape started with my opponent playing a 5-5. Five, five. Um, relatively uncommon move going on. I think I just uh, do this invasion now. Pretty standard stuff. I still like the Kasumi a bit better. Oh, he pushed. Usually people don't like to make this exchange because it's... it's This livery is quite important for the future. Well, since he doesn't take it, I'm just going to extend. This is very urgent. As you can see, we both have influences facing this way. So the center point is very important. Wow. Invasion so early on. Curious to see. Okay, yeah, he can escape. I'm gonna push out now, and then we get this Hane. Okay, this is probably the worst move he played so far because after this I can extend. And he just got Gote there. And additionally, when I jump back here, there's a weakness, which I which I don't have anymore. Um, now I can Hane. That was a, also a very slow move. He can't actually do this. Okay, I just said he can't, but then... Um, okay, well, that's... A, <laughs> um, now we'll show why he can't. Because now his four stones are dead. And he's completely lost the game. Wow, okay. <laughs> Let's jump out now. I kind of want to play a move over here. There's actually an attachment. The Hane and Connect is also too slow. I don't know. I see a lot of people do this, but if you don't have any territory here, you're just gonna get Gote, and it's only reducing your opponent by about five points or so. But if you don't answer to this, the Hane is actually way bigger. So very bad exchange that I see a lot of people make. Now this this <laughs> this cut is going to be very severe. I don't think he saw that. Um, so we're just gonna casually capture this. <laughs> And this game, these games are be extremely quick. Since it's been, I think this is, I believe this is the fifth game of this episode already. I think we're going to stop it here. If, um, even if it ends relatively quick. Okay. Um, I'm not going to capture. Yeah, it's, it's not. Um, I don't really. Yeah.
The outside is also very important. And if I go here when he cuts, um, I'm bound to lose stuff on the outside. But now I can just keep capturing other stuff. On the outside, basically white is falling apart everywhere. I'll just let him get the Satari. It doesn't really matter too much. So everything, everywhere is kind of falling apart for white right now. Well, this group is dead. And the outside is almost dead. Yeah, it's really had to do with this upper left stuff. Like he kind of completely died there. Uh, misreading a couple moves there. All of which was pretty bad. I guess we'll just casually play this out. Um, yeah. So this wedge and this uh, wedge and connect didn't really do much since I can just pressure his outside. So okay, we'll just capture this then. He's actually trying to kill my group. Interesting. Well, or maybe I have to get a little bit more defensive for these couple of moves. Decently defensive. We're just like blitzing this, but I'm okay with that. Um, I think the faster I get up there, it, the better. Because I think maybe when I get to 5, then I actually will have more stuff to talk about during the game. Which will make it a lot more interesting, I believe. So this is so... It's pretty much done when I cut on the outside. Alright. Oh, good move there. Good move, good move. <clears throat> so it seems like when uh, doing 3 down, my, my 3 down adventures have told me that for a lot of 3 down players on Fox, when they actually have a chance, the moves actually make a lot of sense. But they're not very good at creating that chance. So when when you kind of look at my way of like handling handling the play, it seems like my opponents don't really create that many chances for themselves. And then when they get to five, then that ability just becomes a lot stronger. I think that pretty much generalizes to everyone. Yeah, so the ability of actually creating those chances. In order to create those chances, you really have to play proper moves. You can't just be playing really, really defensive moves, and you can't be playing really aggressive moves, as we saw for many games um, this episode. Some players are really aggressive, some players are overly defensive, and um, having that balance is really important. Again, that theme of balance. Um, someone has recommended me do a video on it. Maybe I will, but probably not uh, in the near future. I'll see when um, I have more things to talk about. When I, uh, I'll, I'll try to uh, put together uh, some of, like some general things about balance, and maybe I'll do a separate lecture on that. But uh, in the future, not uh, any, not in like next few weeks or something. Anyway. Uh, progressing smoothly, 16 wins now on the high eye. Uh, let's draw the next account, uh, the next opening for the next episode, four. So I think that's uh, many Chinese. Okay, very good. Notice that it's Lee Sado here. Legendary Lee Sado in the early 2000s. Anyway, 
uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. A lot of the games are being really fast. Um, so these these uh, episodes are really different, and there's really nice change of pace. Actually, sorry, um, I did draw six god. So what we're, what I'm gonna do is six god next video, and then we're just after six god, we're gonna start with the mini Chinese for uh, episode five. So see you all then.